I am Dr. Alina Allen from Mayo Clinic, Rochester, and on behalf of my co-authors, I'd like to thank the editors for the invitation to present our paper entitled Safety and Efficacy of Hepatitis C Treatment in Patients with Inflammatory Bowel Disease, which will be published in the December issue of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Patients with concomitant inflammatory bowel disease and hepatitis C represent a complex subset of patients. Interferon therapy has immune modulatory actions which can potentially worsen the clinical course of IBD. On the other hand, immunosuppressive therapy for IBD can potentially worsen the fibrosis progression of hepatitis C infection. Moreover, the interaction between hepatitis C and IBD-specific agents can lead to potential serious adverse events such as pancytopenia or hepatotoxicity. This clinical conundrum led us to conduct a retrospective review of all patients who underwent interferon-based treatment at Mayo Clinic Rochester between 2001 and 2012 who had concomitant inflammatory bowel disease. We aim to determine the rate of IBD flares during hepatitis C treatment, the rate of adverse events during concomitant therapy for hepatitis C and inflammatory bowel disease, and also the efficacy of hepatitis C therapy in this patient population. Of over a thousand patients treated with hepatitis C, we identified 15 patients with concomitant inflammatory bowel disease, eight patients with ulcerative colitis, and seven patients with Crohn's disease. Overall therapy was well tolerated except for one patient who had a mild flare of IBD activity without gross endoscopic changes and only with mild inflammation per biopsies. A second patient experienced a temporary flare after the completion of hepatitis C therapy, which resolved spontaneously within two weeks. Cytopenias were noted at rates comparable or slightly lower than the ones published in the hepatitis C literature. Hepatotoxicity was not observed in patients who underwent concomitant therapy with azathioprine. The overall sustained virologic response rate was 67%. Two patients completed triple-based therapy with telaprevir, both of which uh, achieved SVR. Overall, our study supports the evidence that interferon-based therapy is well tolerated in patients with inflammatory bowel disease as long as the disease is under control prior to the initi initiation of the antiviral therapy. Thorough evaluation and management of IBD activity and continuation of maintenance therapy is recommended. Although rare, flares are minimal and easily managed with first-line therapy. The presence of IBD, while taken into careful consideration, should not lead to automatic deferral of hepatitis C treatment when indicated. Treatment of hepatitis C in these patients is as effective as in the general population. However, the risk of IBD exacerbation in harder to treat patients, such as those on combination therapy with immunomodulators and biologics, remains unknown. In light of emerging therapy with direct acting antiviral agents, which may obviate the need for interferon, those patients who do not have advanced fibrosis or need for immediate therapy may be best counseled to wait. Thank you.